So what is roaming? Oftentimes people ask themselves, is roaming good here and is that good here? A few of the key things that you should look towards when roaming is, one, is your wave pushed in? Two, where is my jungler? Three, where do I think their jungler is gonna be? And fourth, and finally, does me roaming here gain me advantage or gain my team an advantage? Now, if you can answer all those questions, that will determine if you want to roam or not. So starting with the first question, is your wave pushed in? If it is, then you can look for roam opportunities. Then in second, you look at where your jungler is. If your jungler is on the opposite side of the map of where you want to roam, that doesn't necessarily mean you can't do it. But keep in mind, if you run into the enemy jungler, that might be a bad thing. And that brings you to number three. Where do you think the enemy jungler is? For example, if you're mid lane and you want to roam to their bottom lane and your jungler is top side, then you have to think, if their enemy jungler is bot lane and I go down there, is that good for us? If the answer to that is yes, then you can move to the fourth question. Can I gain anything from going down here for myself or for my team? If the answer to that is yes, then you can go ahead and try that. However, the answer to that is no, then you should just keep the pressure mid and keep vision and try to find the enemy jungler and not roam instead. Also, as a note, this is something that is hard to learn even with those questions. So I would recommend just practicing roaming and figure out what times it goes well for you and what times it goes bad will be a quick way for you to figure out when you should and roam. So some common pathing for roaming for mid lane is going through the river and going from behind their tower. Say you are purple side and you're running down towards bot. You want to go through their forest. So you shove mid and all the way, disappear off the map, go into the river, but then go into their forest. If you have a ward, drop it near the wraith area so you can see if the wraiths are up and then go all the way down. If there is a blast plant, take the blast plant. However, if there isn't, you can just go through the tri brush. You basically want to roam into the way that brings you behind them you never want to run just straight at them through the river because the river is the most likely awarded place so you want to always do your best to go through the forest if possible the way you take exactly will depend on what side of the game you're on and where you're going so you'll ask for your lane that you're roaming to to push in the wave so that it hits the tower and then you come in from behind the tower Roaming based on matchups is actually a pretty important thing. There's some champions that want to just sit in lane all day, such as Anivia or Lux or Orianna. Yes, they can roam, but they're not the best at it. Other champions like Talon, Galio, Aurelion, Soul, things like that want to roam. So the difference with that is if you need to sacrifice a mid lane wave to roam to make a big play, that's perfectly fine depending on the champion that you are. Talon would excel at that, Galio would be well at that, or any champion with TP really. If you have teleport up, you can leave your lane, go make a play, and then teleport back. And in other scenarios where you're laning versus, say, an Azir or a Zoe or someone that's extremely lane dominant and you don't want to be there anymore, you can roam and make a play elsewhere, and you're probably not going to lose that much mid. You might lose a wave, but it's unlikely he'll take your tower or be able to do anything meaningful. He might just back. And a good thing about that is, roaming even not in ideal scenarios can be beneficial based on the matchup that you're in just due to the fact that you don't want to be there anymore or you're trying to tilt the enemy team so if you're behind in lane phase and all that's going to happen is that you're going to keep losing and losing and losing if you stay in there you should do your best to try and look for a play oftentimes people just sit in the losing lane waiting for help if help is not coming to you you need to figure out a way to get yourself out of that and almost oftentimes you won't be able to do that on your own through mid lane due to the fact that they're ahead or they just have the better matchup so look at your map and see if there's something you can do can you go top and tower dive top can you go bottom and tower dive bottom can you kill the enemy jungler if you can you can go try and hunt them down in the jungle but just sitting in lane slowly getting poked and losing your tower is not going to be a good thing for you so it's worthwhile to sacrifice a wave or so to make a play elsewhere if you can get the pressure there because if you lose a wave mid but you go bottom and make their bottom lose a wave bottom it evens out in the end and it will start bringing you back into the game if you can get a kill or pressure elsewhere Playing around objectives is a tricky subject since it's so intricate depending on who you're playing and who you're playing versus. But in general, when you're sieging on a tower, where you stand will depend on the type of champion you are. If you're an assassin, you don't want to be hitting the tower and you do not want to be standing next to your AD carry. You more than likely want to be on the side, behind the turret or to the left of the turret or whatever, somewhere out of vision, hiding, waiting for them to engage or finding a good engage yourself. If you're playing a poke champion, you don't want to be hitting the tower 
power. You don't want to be in a position of being engaged. That's a common thing poke champions fall prey to. They walk up too far and get engaged time. Your main goal is to sit in the back, throwing spells at them, doing damage, making them not want to engage on you or not allowing them to engage on you. If you're playing a control mage like Orianna or Azir, then yes, you probably want to be hitting the tower, but keeping yourself away from the AD carry. You don't ever want to be necessarily standing on top of him because if you guys both get engaged on that's really bad. So do your best to stand away from him. If he keeps following you around, then that kind of sucks, but tell him not to. Keep distance from your AD carry and make sure that you both can't get engaged on at the same time and keep track of their enemy engager. If they have a recon or a malphite, you probably want to keep a little bit of distance from them and keep track of him because that's the only way you're going to die. For dragon fights, it's kind of the same thing as tower sieges. If you're an assassin, you probably want to be hiding in the forest somewhere, out of vision, out of sight, looking for the best opportunity to come into the fight or the flank. If you are a poke mage, you don't want to be standing in the front. As far back as you can, let them engage in your AD carry or your jungler or whatever and keep throwing spells from the back because you will do a lot of damage as long as you're alive. If you're a control mage like Orianna, Syndra, things like that, you do want to be standing somewhere in the front but behind your jungler. You want to be looking for good shockwave, looking for good Syndra stuns, or looking for a good opportunity to start that fight or get off a lot of damage to make them not want to fight or zone them even with your spells. If Syndra has a lot of balls on the ground or if Orion has balls on the ground, that's a good zoning tool. So that's important for those champions to zone. For Baron fighting, you basically don't want to hit the Baron as an assassin unless you guys are trying to just burst in and get out. If you're starting a Baron fight, that means you're baiting Baron and you're looking to come from behind them. And if an assassin is on Baron, you're basically running through the front and that's not what you want to do. You want to hide in the bush somewhere out of vision, away from the walk and farther, then jump in on them. For control mages and poke mages and whatnot, you're basically going to be on the Baron, but just make sure you're not the one that gets engaged on. It's very important that in every single fight, you're not the first one to get jumped on. Unless you're a Galio, then that's fine. But generally speaking, you don't want to be engaged on. For defending sieges and objectives, the thing that is most important to actually defend is to kill the minions. Most oftentimes, I'll see people using their spells to harass the enemy laners or whatever, but that doesn't stop them from hitting your tower unless it's an insane amount of damage. But generally, look to clear the minions because if there's no minions on your tower, they get the armor back and it becomes extremely hard to kill the tower. So if you're playing Syndra, Oriana, Azir, or whatever, use your damage on the creeps. Do your best to kill the creeps and don't be afraid to use your ultimate to clear the creeps so that you can save a tower. Using that ultimate to save the tower is the same gold value as it would be using to get a kill since you save your tower and the fact that a tower is more important than a kill in the first place so prioritizing the safety of your towers will go a lot farther than prioritizing the kill of the enemy champion unless you can jump all that into more but do your best to just clear the creeps and that will keep your tower alive longer